This episode was brought to you by Skillshare. Despite what I say on this channel, human vision is quite amazing. We may not have the sharpest vision, or the best colour vision, or the best night vision of the animal kingdom, but we do have a remarkable balance of all three, a jack of all trades if you will. However, because we are mostly diurnal animals, our night vision is certainly the weakest. So I was wondering, when compared to the average camera, how does our eyesight deal with low light conditions? Our eyes can cope with over a million fold change in brightness from broad daylight to a pitch black night, and coping with and adapting to changing levels of light variation is one of the eye's most important jobs. There are several ways our eyes let us see better in the dark. Firstly, our pupil can widen, allowing more light to pass through. However, our pupils are only able to dilate from 1mm up to 8mm, which isn't really enough to let in the amount of light required to transition from a brightly lit scene to a starry night. Most of the magic that enables us to see at night happens in the retina. This process is known as dark adaptation. Firstly, there is a switchover from cones to rods. Cones are photosensitive cells which respond best in highlight levels and they send colour information to the brain. Whereas the rods are also sensitive at a much wider range of light levels, especially lower ones, and this is actually why our vision is generally in black and white in low light conditions. To complete dark adaptations, the rod in the retina must fully regenerate. When a photoreceptor is stimulated by light, a compound called rhodopsin is photobleached in response. In cones, it takes around 10 minutes for the pigment to regenerate, and in rods, up to 30 minutes, which is why it generally takes around half an hour to fully adjust to a dark room. The horizontal cells which connect photoreceptors downstream together also send information back to the photoreceptor so they can adjust their sensitivity accordingly. And this means that small changes in light levels that would normally be imperceptible in broad daylight are detected and fully perceptible under low light conditions. Now that's about it when it comes to dark adaptation in humans because we don't have the other fancy adaptations that other nocturnal animals have for low light environment, such as dipetums or spatial or temporal summation. So how do cameras operate? Well there are a few things that work quite similarly to our own vision, we can open the aperture of a camera to let more light in onto the sensor, and we can also raise the ISO, which increases the sensitivity of the sensor. Both of these would be the equivalent of dilating our pupils and undergoing dark adaptation. However, even when increasing ISO as far as possible and opening the aperture as wide as it will go, the resulting picture of a night sky will probably be a lot blacker than what you can see in real life. But fortunately, there are a few other things you can do with your camera to make it perform a little bit better in low light, the main one being to decrease the shutter speed. This allows an image to expose on the sensor for longer, so for example, these pictures here took between 8 and 15 seconds to take, and believe it or not, they were taken at midnight. And to be honest, I have to say that getting an updated image every 10 seconds is anything but practical in real life, but they can capture a great level of detail, and they can also be used for artistic purposes, such as to denote the passage of time, or for creative purposes. However, as well as taking longer to photograph, the other downside of low-light photography is that it tends to have a lot more noise. Cranking up the ISO increases sensor noise, and exposing images on the sensor for longer than a couple of seconds creates thermal noise as the sensor heats up. There are, however, a few ways around this. It is generally possible to reduce the appearance of ISO noise in post-production, and you can reduce the degree of thermal noise in camera using a setting called the Long Exposure Noise Reduction, or LENR, setting. If you activate the setting after taking a photo, the camera will actually take a second picture with the shutter closed for the same amount of time, meaning you will have a dark picture with a thermal noise imaged on it, which can then be subtracted from the original photo taken. Whilst it does double the amount of time it takes to take a photo, it does render a much cleaner image. So as to who performs better in low light, our eyes or a run-of-the-mill camera, it really depends on what you want. If what you want is to navigate quickly and detect objects and do everything fast, human vision wins out. But if you're after detail and colour information, then camera is probably the way to go. And fun fact before I head off, the sky pictures you saw in today's episode, as you might have been able to guess, I took myself, I'm quite proud of them. They were from the Poseidon Meteor Shower in mid-August. I took them following Ian Norman's course on Skillshare, who's an astrophotographer I really, really admire. And compared to the clueless Ines from a year ago, I'm really pleased with how they turned out. Skillshare is an online learning community with over 16,000 classes, and if you know me, you know that with every video I make, I always try to challenge myself to try out a new photography or editing technique, and honestly, over the past couple of months, I've been trying out a few new things from Skillshare. 
from subtle animation things to improving my time lapses to this long exposure photography. I'm trying hyperlapses next. So if you're like me and you like learning new things and pushing yourself creatively, the first 500 people to click the link in the description will get a two month free trial on Skillshare. After that, membership starts at $10 per month, but if you discover during that trial that it's not for you, you can cancel. There's no risk or obligation to continue with it. And as always, thank you so much for watching me, and I'll see you in the next one. Bye.